everybody, my name is Lynn and welcome back to Ocean Core, ocean education and everyday solutions for everyone. Today we're going to continue the story of how the microfiber gets where it's going by looking at how they actually travel once they're free. The quickest of recaps first, microfibers are a part of the microplastics family. They look like small pieces of multicolored string less than 5 millimeters in length and less than 10 microns around. They're made out of oil and chemical additives. They come mostly from our clothes and things that make our homes comfy. They're found in every nook and cranny of this planet. And heat, sun, water, friction, use, and time all start the breaking down process of the material, letting microfibers free to travel. But once they're shed from their host and free, how do they get around to every nook and cranny? This wasn't an easy thing for me to either visualize or try to explain because there are so many trails or connections that crisscross all over everywhere. It's like trying to give directions to a place when there's 500 different ways to get there. I found it easiest to imagine the planet as a snow globe. Keep that in mind as we continue to build the picture and we'll come back to this image at the end of the video. Okay. Now we learned in the last video that we are the first mode of travel for microfibers. Simply put, wherever we go, they go. But after you wear something or make a blanket pillow fort in your living room, things need to be washed, right? Enter again, water, friction, and sometimes heat, but all at once this time. This is a perfect recipe for shedding and a direct flight to the second mode of microfiber travel, water. Why does laundry matter? because researchers from the University of Plymouth in the UK found that as synthetic fiber production increased through time, so did the amounts of fibers found in our ocean. And a report done by the IUCN said studies of the millions of tons of microplastics released into these environments every year found that two thirds are due to washing synthetic clothing. But what I personally, need, personally needed to know was how are the fibers from my clothes finding their way into the ocean in the first place, for goodness sake? Going back to Mark Anthony Brown's 2011 study, he found one fleece jacket would shed about 1,900 fibers per wash. Brown also found a 250% increase in microfibers in waters near wastewater treatment plants, which led him to think these fibers are coming from our clothes and not being filtered out in wastewater treatment plants. They're too small and treatment plants aren't using filters that would remove things that small. This seems to be a popular entry site and is most likely giving a lot of the fibers their free trip to the ocean. From here, the researchers at the Unity of University of Manchester in the UK found currents and underwater avalanches transported these fibers in pieces across the seafloor like a conveyor belt. Pieces even seem to be gathering in what the study's scientists are now calling microplastic hotspots. So even microfibers have super popular vacation spots where everyone gathers too, like Waikiki here in Hawaii, on a normal day before COVID-19 anyway. Now, we can't forget about the rest of our household items. Washing these only adds to the microfibers being free to travel the world. All right, now we have an idea how microfibers break free from their hosts, how they hitchhike around the world with humans, how they get into the ocean, and then move around once they get there. But there are still travel destinations left. How do they get to those? Let's talk about our other waterways, like lakes, rivers, and streams for a minute. The Rosalia Project studied microplastic levels throughout a watershed and found no real differences in microplastic levels except near treatment plants, where they increased a lot, which was expected based on Brown's findings, which means there was already a measurable amount of microplastics in the water before wastewater treatment plants added their two cents. So where could this initial amount of microplastics have come from? One theory project leaders had is that fibers are entering waterways via septic system drain fields. Basically, waste and wash water drains into designated fields to prevent septic tanks from overflowing. This overflow eventually finds its way to another water source, usually a river or stream, with its final destination being the ocean or a lake. Thanks for hanging out today. Don't forget to subscribe to OC's channel so you don't miss anything. And remember, whatever you learn here, please share it forward. I'll see you next time.